Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking The Real Housewives of Orange County, season 16, episode four. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. So this episode picks up where the new housewife, Jen, she uh, gives Heather an invite to come over to her house. So she wants to get to know Heather. Heather shows up with a bottle of champs. It looks like it was Dom Perignon, so she definitely did not bring over any Corvail. Let me tell you, if they don't sell it at the Kroger or the Walmart, you're not getting it from me. Anyway, I thought it was extremely cute when Jen offered to give Heather a tour of her house. And Heather was really cool. She was telling her how beautiful her home was. And I said, well, wow, I remember last year when Shannon and everybody was making fun of Gina's small house. I was so happy that Heather did not act as if she was too good to be over at Jen's house. Because, you know, I have my feelings about Heather. Sometimes I get a kick out of Heather and her behavior, but other times I think that she acts extremely pretentious and she, seems to put herself on a pedestal and act as if she's better than everybody else. And she looks down upon people, in my opinion. And I'm really not a fan of it. I'm really not because no one's better than anybody else. You just happen to have a little more money than everybody else, but that doesn't mean that you're better than them. And you were not born rich, you know, quit playing. Anyway, Jen tells her the situation about her husband not wearing a shirt and how, you know, their old school reached out to them about the moms being a little bit uncomfortable with him being in the carpool line with his shirt off. And you know, every episode when we see Jen, we have to hear about her husband and this shirt off. You know, her husband is a decent looking man, but you know, buddy, I, I, you won't be on the People Magazine Sexiest Man Alive issue anytime soon. And you know, in the carpool, buddy, put on a shirt. I'm just saying, when you're walking around your house, you out in the backyard, you're at the beach, okay. But the carpool, be respectful. I'm just saying. Then they talk a little bit about their business, you know, Jen working in the beauty industry. And she makes the comment that she would like her patients to look as if they haven't had any work done. And that's the kind of cosmetic surgery I like too. You know, personally, myself, I think that any man or woman who wants to get a tweak here or a tweak there, if it makes them feel great, if that's the way they want to look, I say go for it. If you can afford it and you're not doing any damage to yourself, go for it. But there are some patients that she calls them cat muppets. I know who she's talking about. You know, she said that some of them have sat in the seat that she's sitting in right now. And I have to agree. I do think that there are some people who go a little too far. Now, I don't know if they're going for the cat muppet look. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if they want to be a tigeress or a lioness. You know, I don't know. But if that's not what you're going for, I think you need to slow down and head on over to Terry DeBro's office so you can, you know, he does the botched. I'm just saying, I totally get what she's saying. She says that if her patients come out of her office and they do not look natural, then she has totally messed up. I'm just saying. And I did see something recently in the blogs that allegedly one of her patients is suing her. Now, I don't know what it's about. It's alleged, but that's what I saw in the blog. Good luck with that case, uh, Jen. She does tell Heather that at her party, she felt extremely disrespected by Noella and Noella's behavior. Um, you know, they showed a little flashback. Noella was absolutely, you know, rude. She tried to overtalk uh, Jen, but that's not something that would be a big issue for me. You know, I think right in that moment, I would have nipped it in the bud with her and moved on about my business. I think that some people will try you until you say something. You know, they continued the conversation as if it was okay and she didn't point it out to, to, to Noella at the time. Personally, I believe you have to treat some grown-ups like toddlers. You need to remind them in the moment. So let me just tell you right now, don't talk down to me, don't be disrespectful, and we're gonna get along. 
come off crazy with me and I'm gonna give you the same energy. I think, you know, two seconds off to the side so that you don't interrupt this woman's party and it's all good. I'm just saying. Jen says she's not into the mean girls and she asked Heather how the situation was going regarding the blow up at her party. And she says that she's spoken to all parties involved except for one and they're all good. And you know, I have never been the one to be Team Shannon. Everybody knows that Shannon Storms Bedore irritates me to high hell, okay? The woman irritates me. But I don't understand how everybody can be so, oh, Shannon this and Shannon that. Everybody's standing on Shannon's back. When it was something that Shannon said that she should not have said, that was none of her business and she should not have said it, but she said it off camera off microphone to her two friends who they supposedly were the new Trace of me guys and asked them not to say anything. And they both said they wouldn't. Gina and her loud mouth, which I am not a fan of Gina this season. This season, Gina is doing the most. And I understand, I understand. Holding on to this Bravo check and this orange is very important. If I was any of the housewives across any of the franchises, I would definitely want to hold on to my check. But come on now. There has to be a line. There has to be some point where you have to stand up and say, yes, this is my fault. This is my responsibility. It's not all Shannon. Because you went into this woman's elegant $36,000 party that you didn't even make it to the entrees for and interrupted this woman and told her about the lawsuit and about Shannon. The next thing you know, you got Emily and Nicole acting a fool in the middle of this woman's party. Everything is just out of control. And you know, I'm sorry, Emily and Gina have responsibility in this. I don't think that Shannon should take all of the blame this time. Then Noella meets up with Nicole for a little lunch. You know, Noella is absolutely going through a complete crisis. Now, let me tell you, in real time, her husband says that their divorce was final December the 3rd, I think he said. These two are going back and forth at each other all over social media. It is absolutely crazy. Her husband is alleging all kinds of stuff about her behind the scenes. Uh, honey, listen, it, and she is alleging all kinds of stuff about her husband behind the scenes. Uh, both of y'all need to get off of the social media. Get off of the social media. He's done. He says that he will always love her. He loves his son, but he needed to move on for himself so that he could be healthy and happy. Honey, I think he's healthy and happy with a woman down there. But anyway, Noella is devastated. When she shows up for this lunch, she is crying. She is a shell of herself. That woman who is always dressed to the nines, always makeup down, she is literally crying her eyes out. She is having a lot to drink. She, it's, it's a lot going on. And I also have just one thing, just one thing. Peeps, I'm telling you right now, if you have ever gotten in the comments or you have never gotten in the comments, get in the comments. Did anybody think that something was off about Nicole's makeup? I think her makeup was really bothering me. I don't know what it was, but it was just a little odd. It was heavy. It was a lot of rouge. The lipstick. I don't know what it was. It was bad. I still need to find him in order to turn back on the credit cards, make sure that rent gets paid in order to afford... My, son, my son's therapy. Cause I... <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna get the bill. Let's go. Come on. I'm having a breakdown right now. I feel like I'm having a breakdown. Walk out quietly, cause there's a lot of people here. Come on, get up. I don't feel comfortable. My life is falling apart. Now here, this here really pissed me off. It really pissed me off. I said, you know what, Nicole, you are the most unsupportive, selfish friend I have ever seen. And that is just my opinion. This woman is having a full on mental breakdown. She has no money, no credit cards. She has a child at home and her mama, and she doesn't know how she's gonna get the money to pay the mortgage payment. She has not spoken to her husband since Friday. And all you care about is being embarrassed in public. People are watching, be quiet, oh my gosh. I mean, that was just a bit much. Who cares?
cares? You don't know those people. Now, me personally, I've always said I don't like it when the housewives act a fool at restaurants and people are standing around staring and watching, but this is something that I would make an exception for. She's not screaming uncontrollably. She's crying. She's breaking down. She needs a friend to be comforting. And you were so concerned about being embarrassed in front of all these other rich people. I mean, clearly we have heard on the show that you have been through one or two, maybe even three, and you're currently going through a divorce right now. So you have to know how painful a divorce is, especially when it allegedly just popped out of nowhere and she thought her relationship was in a good place, especially when she didn't have a backup plan, which makes no sense to me, honey, you don't. Don't marry rich and sit at home and be a pamper princess and not have a backup plan. I done told you. You plan for a wedding, a plan for a divorce. Now I'm saying I know it's not romantic to plan for a divorce. I know that. I know that. But this is the real world, people. Sometimes it's a fairy tale and sometimes it's a nightmare. You don't sit around at home making those comments that you made to Jen at the party about all you did was get out of bed and get your uh, glam squad on and come to this party because you don't work. Well, honey, I don't know. You might need to work. I am pretty sure being the newest of housewives, your real housewives of the OC check is not going to cover that huge house. Listen, I'm telling you right now, Noella, have some tears, have some drinks, but sober up long enough to get a game plan. And one thing that you should do is get rid of Nicole because that woman is not a good friend. She is not your friend. She is a backstabbing, opportunist, thirsty ass woman. Sorry, but that's just my opinion. So then we move on to Shannon and we find out that her daughter, Stella, who has grown up to be so beautiful. I've seen some pictures of uh, her twins online and those little girls have shots up and they're just adorable they really are but her daughter stella is now working for her as an assistant for her real for real business she said that she hired an assistant and then the assistant quit and does anybody wonder why i don't you know working for shannon i mean i think i would make it six minutes before she has called the Orange County police <laughs> because I would light her up. Girl, you're out of control. Anyway, Shannon says that she is paying for her daughter Sophie's college. She's also going to be paying for the twins college because she did not negotiate well and forgot some things on the list for David to take care of. She says that she's received two lump sum payments and she gets a monthly payment from David that does not cover all of her expenses. And I thought to myself, okay, you got those two lump sum payments. You get a monthly payment. You also get your housewife check. Do you think that maybe you might need to budget a little better? Cut back a little bit? And how is it possible that in your divorce, the children's college was not negotiated? Because you're a working mom and David is a working father. And there's no way that... David should not be paid at least 50% of the kid's college fund. I have no idea. I, you know, take it from Shannon, who knows? Maybe some of those payments were supposed to be towards the kid's college. Who knows? I'm just saying, if you can't make ends meet the way you want them to with all of this money, then you may need to get yourself an accountant and start going over your spend and, you know, get rid of some of that stuff. I don't know. So then we see a double date between Emily and Shane, Travis and Gina, and Emily lets them know that she's gonna be having a celebration to celebrate Shane passing the bar exam. She lets us know that she met up with Nicole the day before. Since they had the big falling out at Heather's party, she says that they have made up, she has forgiven Nicole, and she really likes her. Gina just out of nowhere decides that it's her business to tell Emily everything that she found out about Noella when they went to the cryo lab. She explains to her about her tax situation and then how, you know, Noella reached out to her and told her that sweet James had filed for divorce. So why would you cut off access to money when she has to take care of a kid? That makes no sense. Not so sweet James anymore, is it? Listen, I have to agree with Emily. 
Um, it is very low class. It is very hurtful and rude and disrespectful and irresponsible to leave a woman who is taking care of your child, who you have been taking care of for all of this time with nothing. I think that cutting off her finances right now when she needs to be able to care for this baby, have, pay the mortgage to have a roof over this baby's head without giving her any warning is absolutely horrible. And I also would have to agree with Shane. He, uh, Sweet James is gone. I don't know who Sweet James is. Then Gina says that she has decided to set separate boundaries for Shannon because she knows who she is and she knows where she stands. Um, you know what? Shannon should not talk to you or Emily in my opinion. Um, Emily is outraged. How dare she talk about the two of them behind their back and say that she's their friend. Um, how many scenes and episodes have we seen over this season and last season and the season before that where Emily and Gina both talk mad trash about Shannon and then we're the Trace Amigas. I mean, if you guys can talk bad about her, she can talk bad about you. And if you can look her in her face and tell her off camera that you are going to keep her secret, you are going to keep your word and not tell anybody, and then mention it on camera that you did promise her that you wouldn't say anything, but still run and tell it on camera, she has every right to say that you are manipulative and not to trust you. Now listen, I don't know what universe we are in that I am Team Shannon Storms Bedore. Oh, this is gonna be a hard pill to swallow, but I'm sorry, Team Shannon Storms Bedore. You guys are out of control, totally, and I get it. Hold on to the peach, I get it. I'm with you, okay? <laughs> because I would be trying to hold on to my peach as well, but I'm gonna own up to my mess, period. Then we see a touching moment with Shannon and her daughter, Stella. And Stella was saying that she can really tell even more now that she's working with Shannon, that she is extremely stressed and she is going through a lot. And she just wants to be there for her mom to take away some of the stress and pressure that she is under. And she really wants Shannon to just be happy and I think that Shannon should really get herself into some sort of therapy. I think she needs therapy for multiple things. I also think she might wanna cut back on the, the gray goose and soda or the Tito's and, and soda with the lime. Cut back on all of that. Add therapy into your life because your stress, your crazy antics, your behavior is affecting not only yourself, but your children as well do something. Then we see Noella spending a little time with her mom. During this conversation, they bring up how close her mother was to James. Her mom was more like a mom to him than he has ever had. Her mom says, maybe she doesn't know him. And she says, of course you do. She says, he's in there. My sweet James is still in there. And I just think that if I could talk to him, I could make all of this work. And her mom says, I think he's gone. I think it's over. From the moment her mom got hit by those papers, it was real. It was over. I know that she is absolutely shocked, but the cameras can follow me while I'm getting my ducks in a row. You know, I haven't seen Sweet James since Friday and the mortgage payment is coming up here soon. And the baby's gonna need uh, diapers and a new sippy cup and all these other things. She says that the baby goes to special therapy. Who's paying for this therapy, James? You know, I think that James lives in Puerto Rico with a whole nother woman. I think that he has started his life over from the war that they're having online. He just wants to be free from this woman. So Noella calls Shannon as they're getting ready to go to Emily's party and Noella thanks Shannon for all of her support. She says that Shannon has been a rock for her as she's going through this divorce. And of course we know that Shannon knows about divorce. Shannon asked her, has she spoke to Heather since the party? And she says she hasn't. However, she does know that Heather has spoken with all the other ladies and there's absolutely no bad blood between any of them. She's just upset with Shannon. So Shannon says, well, I reached out to her and she doesn't want anything to do with me. Do you mind if I read you the text message that she sent me? So she reads the text messages. Listen, um, first of all, 
once I have apologized to someone and it is sincere, that person has the right to accept my apology or not accept my apology. But what I will not do is continue to apologize to you. If I am being very sincere in asking you to forgive me for my actions and you can't, then I'm moving on with my life. Shannon tells her that when she gets to the party and she wants to apologize again. And when she says that, I said, don't do that. Don't do that. You have apologized. Move on. Let Heather be Heather and you be Shannon. So Nicole and Heather decide to ride together to Emily's party. Heather says that she wants to make a statement by her and Nicole showing up there that they are still good friends, which, okay, who cares? Anyway, on the way there, Miss Good Friend Nicole takes the opportunity to start some drama with Noella. And I don't understand this. Noella was having a really bad day that day. And she said, because I know she doesn't remember and know she didn't mean it, but she said Heather's a, a fake bitch. Oh. Okay, so she was drunk. I'm sure she didn't mean it, but I'm gonna tell you this anyway. So this lady is your friend. She is suffering, she is having a breakdown, she is drinking heavy, she is crying, she is financially ruined, and you think this is a good time to start more drama for this woman with fancy pants, Heather? You know what, with friends like Nicole, who needs enemies? I'm telling you, you I was about to say paint your face clown, but it, it's, it, it's already clown looking. I just can't. You thought it was important for you to tell Heather about this drunken comment that Noella made, which we find out with the previews next week that I think she meant it, but still. You thought it was important to tell Heather about this comment, but it wasn't important for you to tell Heather that you sued her husband. I don't, I don't get you. So when they showed up for Emily's party, I realized that Noella, Gina, and Emily, they were all wearing white. Jen, Nicole, and Heather were all wearing black. And then when Shannon arrived, she was wearing black and white. And I said, please, production has called these people and said, listen, we're gonna coordinate. Kind of wish somebody would have called the Beverly Hills Housewives for the reunion to coordinate. Anyway, as soon as Heather got there, she went straight for Noelle. She hugged her. She gave her a gift for being so nice to Max. She told her how sorry she was and she was, you know, very supportive and kind. She did not, you know, show out at Emily's party. Whereas, you know, Emily and Gina, as soon as they got there, they would have got it popping, you know, and destroyed somebody's event. Noella makes this comment about Jen being so fake and phony. And I think, Noella, you don't come off as the most genuine person yourself. And so now you've called Heather fake and Jen. I agree, Heather is quite fake. Jen, I'm not so sure yet. You know, the verdict is out, but uh, calm down, ma'am. You know, focus on your husband and your finances and the tiny baby. Don't focus on the fake people with the money who is not having problems. I'm just saying. I need to talk to you too. About what? About things I've heard. I thought we were friends, okay. Shannon. Okay, but you know what? I didn't say those words. I didn't say those words. Are a liar? Okay, we're not going to do that. No, 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 that's not what you said. You said they are not to be trusted. They are manipulative. That is what you said today. Who does that? Oh, my God. Here's the thing. Emily, this is your husband's party. You've put out a lot of money for this party. There's a ton of people here. The food looks delicious. You've got the belly dancers coming. You know, you invited Shannon. You knew before you invited her that she said that you were untrustworthy and manipulative. So why did you invite her if you really didn't want her to be there? Walking up on this woman to ask her about what she said at this point in time is not cute. And your husband had already told you at the restaurant, please don't bring this up. You know, it's just, it's that type of behavior. What are you thinking? And then to go grab Heather to come over to reinforce, I mean, it's a she said, she said situation at a grown woman's party. Calm all the way to hell down. I don't understand this. Who cares if Shannon said you are untrustworthy and manipulative? The, the truth hurts sometimes, ma'am. 
Shannon is also untrustworthy and manipulative, and so is Gina, while she's sitting there smiling like she is the innocent party, and she's in the right. Girl, go sit down. Family did offer her support to Noella. She, you know, came off as being very compassionate, very understanding. Shannon is following Heather around. She wants to have this conversation that Heather does not want to have. And finally, after asking multiple times, Heather says, okay, I'm gonna give you what you asked for. I care about you and Terry, and I'm the dumb shit that didn't think. And in the, in the interim, I hurt my friend, and I'm so, so sorry. And I hope that you can accept my apology and over time, forgive me. What they certainly don't, I'm not a gossip. Nothing that you say with the details is gonna change my mind. And I think you had a huge lapse in judgment. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm sorry if this sounds harsh, but this is how I feel. If you ever come after me or my family ever again, you are going to lose a lot more than just my friendship. This will cost a lot. And I'm not saying this as a threat. I'm saying it as a promise. Honey, now listen, with that look Heather was giving Shannon, I am surprised that Shannon didn't turn to stone. Medusa just came out with a ponytail. I mean, personally, who the hell are you, Heather DeBro? You are way too damn much. I am sure that she has scared the hell out of Shannon because Shannon is already talking about her financial issues. But first of all, Shannon, don't beg anybody for forgiveness if it's not the Lord. Okay, no ma'am. You are sitting there crying, asking for this woman's forgiveness. For what reason? Just so you can say that you're friends with Heather and she's got all this money in this big classy house. Girl, go on somewhere. Go on somewhere. Um, Heather, you came off really over the top and rude and just doing too much. Didn't you pretty much make that same threat against Kelly Dodd on the internet and Kelly called you on it? She said, oh, what are you gonna do? And I think Shannon should have called you on it too. What can you really do to her? Seriously, what are you gonna do? Call up the Bravo team and have her fired from the show? I don't think so, because as much as you have been popular on this show, I think Shannon is more popular than you, to be honest. I think that Shannon has brought in more viewers than you. And, and that's just my opinion. I think that was absolutely rude and crossing the line. And I, I can't, I really can't with Heather this season. Anyway, you guys, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Am I wrong about Heather? Am I wrong about Shannon? I don't even know. And definitely, what did you think of Noella in that makeup? I cannot, I cannot. And until next time, bye.